From discovering the location of an underwater treasure, to finding the remains of Napoleon Bonaparte, Lake Michigan has shocked the Lagina brothers. On the mysterious Oak Island, stories swirl about hidden treasures. Recently, researchers made an unexpected discovery, a significant treasure lying at the bottom of Lake Michigan. For centuries, people speculated about pirate gold, and ancient artifacts hidden in Oak Island's depths. Now. The Oak Island researchers shifted their attention to Lake Michigan, drawn by historical clues pointing to a Civil War era treasure. This treasure, rumored to be valued at over $400 million, was believed to be concealed on Poverty Island in Lake Michigan. According to the theory, Napoleon Bonaparte III sent gold in secret to support the Confederate South during the American Civil War. However, the ship carrying this treasure the Captain Lawrence, never made it to its destination and might have sunk off the coast of Poverty Island. This is one of those awesome times when what you're finding fits the story. And the story here is that a ship sank after they jettisoned Civil War gold into Lake Michigan. Another ship at a later date came, possibly found some of that gold, but then sank. The team for this expedition was composed of skilled individuals. Marty Lagina, a seasoned treasure hunter known from Oak Island Explorations, joined forces with Matt Blake, bringing his depth and knowledge to this new adventure. Doug Gossage, an image scanning specialist, and Bob Kripke, the team leader, were also part of this experienced crew. Each member contributed a unique skill set, combining expertise in treasure hunting, historical research, and technical imaging. The preparations for this underwater mission were detailed and thorough. The team used cutting-edge technology, including a magnetometer to scan the lake bed and identify potential debris fields connected to the Captain Lawrence shipwreck. It had some, let's just say, some business on it. Yes, it only takes one, right? That's right. So what we have is the left side is the beginning of that lane, and the right side is the end of that lane. So this here could very well potentially be a debris field. A day before Marty and Matt arrived, Doug and Bob had already begun analyzing the magnetometer data to pinpoint the most promising search areas. Historical research played a crucial role in the preparation process. The team delved into records and accounts related to Captain Lawrence and the rumored gold shipment of Napoleon Bonaparte III. The exploration unfolded with great excitement with the team relying on their collective skills and advanced technology. The magnetometer scans revealed interesting details on the lake bed, and the researchers were eager to uncover the secrets hidden beneath the waters of Lake Michigan. As they delved deeper into the historical accounts, the team felt a sense of excitement and determination. The possibility of unraveling a mystery connected to the Civil War and hidden treasure fueled their enthusiasm. The journey beneath Lake Michigan's surface became a quest for not only riches, but also for untold stories waiting to be discovered. They want to prove the legend is true by finding real proof. They're using old stories to guide their search. Before diving in, they plan things, like what equipment to use and how to talk underwater. The three of us, Luke, you and I, are going to be in the water. So Marty's going to be on the surface come. He'll be able to talk to us, and we'll be able to respond to him. And then I'm going to have a video camera. And it's got an umbilical cord up to the boat. Then Marty will be able to see what I'm pointing at. Luke Clyburn, a skilled diver, joined the team because he's great at deep sea adventures. They got to JW Fisher's Pulse 8X metal detector for underwater use. It can find things up to 200 feet deep in Lake Michigan. This detector is crucial to check the lake's bottom for any leftovers from the past. They hope to find evidence that can 
rewrite a part of the Civil War story, and maybe discover a lost treasure in Lake Michigan. Their target was a spot north of the island, marked by previous scans as a possible debris field. From the Captain Lawrence shipwreck, the trip to the dive spot involved lots of practical preparations and excitement for what they might find. The dive was a careful operation. Going deep into the water had its challenges. The team had to move through dark waters, handle different underwater currents, and deal with the physical strain of diving deep. They kept talking to Marty on the boat to stay safe, and coordinate the dive. During the dive, they carefully checked the lake bottom, searching for anything strange or linked to the old shipwreck. Their big moment came when they reached a ledge, about 50 feet underwater. There, Matty found something interesting, partly buried in the mud. When they took a closer look, they realized it was a dead eye, a wooden piece that ships used in the past for their rigging. The dead eye they found was like a cylinder with holes where ropes went through to hold up a ship's masts. It looks like a dead eye. They used dead eyes on ships a lot, and they were a round cylinder of wood with holes in them, which is why they were called dead eyes. And you'd run the cabling through those. This discovery mattered a lot because it was a real piece from a ship maybe the Captain Lawrence. When the team found it, they felt both satisfied and even more curious. Seeing the dead eye made them think they were on the right track. It hinted that there might be more parts of the shipwreck nearby waiting to be found. This small but important piece of ship history made them more determined to keep looking underwater. Finding the dead eye on the lake bottom was a big moment in their journey. It showed them for sure that their hard work wasn't for nothing. It made them believe that the secrets of poverty, island and the lost civil war treasure could be uncovered. The dead eye was like a step closer to solving the long-lasting mystery of Lake Michigan. There are a few ideas about how the treasure ended up at the lake's bottom. One common idea is that the ship carrying the gold, maybe the Captain Lawrence, had a really bad end. It might have been attacked or caught in a big storm, causing it to sink near Poverty Island. This theory makes sense because old stories and rumors say the French Emperor secretly helped the Confederate South. Some people say Napoleon III, the French Emperor, at that time, might have liked the Confederate States of America, which wanted to be free from the Union. The help could have been money or even a secret delivery of important things like gold. The thought was that this help would give the Confederacy what it needed to keep fighting against the Union. The gold was supposed to help the Confederate side in the war and would give them money to buy weapons and supplies. Another idea is that the ship sank because of mistakes in navigation or really bad weather which can happen a lot in the Great Lakes. The finding also brings back stories from 1929, when a sailor supposedly hooked chests of gold with their anchor but ended up losing them back to the lake. This story adds more mystery to the hidden treasure tale. Even though there's no proof of this legend, it makes the whole story more interesting. The dead eye they found connects them to the past but it also brings up many questions. The researchers' discovery is a big step in figuring out the mysteries of Lake Michigan. It might lead to more answers about the shipwreck and the treasure everyone's looking for. The Oak Island team's ongoing search could uncover a part of history hidden underwater. For more than 100 years, the ballast zones are key in a lot of ways. Because first of all, it narrows what kind of ship it could be. And when that ship was sailing, the potential shipwreck artifact found in Lake Michigan by the Oak Island team has sparked interest in possible links to Oak Island's famous treasure. Even though the two places are far apart, there are interesting similarities in their stories especially with regards to hidden treasures and shipwrecks. Experts who know a lot about maritime history and finding treasures have talked about what this Lake Michigan find could mean for Oak Island's mysteries. Historians say the time of the American Civil War, which is connected to the Lake Michigan discovery, was full of secret missions and hidden treasures. They think these secret activities might have had a bigger impact 
maybe even affecting other treasure stories, like the one about Oak Island. The idea that important historical stuff got moved and hidden during chaotic times is not unusual. The Lake Michigan discovery adds more to this story. The Oak Island research team found a possible treasure at the bottom of Lake Michigan. Now that we've revealed what I believe to be that gold bar, the story just begins. There's a huge process ahead of us. It's going to be an exciting one. Oh, this story's far from being over. But this discovery comes with lots of arguments and difficulties, from fights about who owns it, to questions about what's right in the world, of finding treasures and studying old things. One big argument is about who legally owns the treasure. It's a big deal because this find could be super valuable both historically and financially, different groups might say it's theirs. The discovery team could claim it. The state where they found it might want a piece. And even the descendants of the first owners might have a say. Laws about the sea and treasures might come into play, making things even more complicated. Where the find is, whether in state or federal waters, can also change how the laws work. I think that this poverty island treasure if it is still there and nobody has gotten to it yet, I believe we're going to find something. Keeping the artifacts safe is a tricky job. These things might be hundreds of years old, and easily break when taken out of the water. The team has to be careful not only when bringing them up, but also in keeping them safe for later study and display. This needs help from experts who know how to keep old stuff from falling apart. They also need to be super careful in documenting everything, because taking things out can mess up the history on the ground, making it harder to learn about the past. The question of whether it's right to hunt for treasures is a hot topic in the archaeology world. Some people say it's not good, because it can be like taking advantage of things caring more about making money than learning from history. It might also ruin old places people could learn from. Some folks argue for ways of digging up old stuff that keep the context intact and focus on understanding history rather than just finding valuable things. On the flip side, those who support treasure hunting say it can uncover historical things that might stay hidden otherwise. They also mentioned that if treasure hunters historians, and archaeologists work together, they can make responsible and useful discoveries. The way the Oak Island team handles their find can change how people see treasure hunting. In the big picture of history and archaeology, the Oak Island team is dealing with lots of challenges, not just physical ones, but also legal, ethical, and conservation issues. What do you think our next plan of attack should be? because we can't touch it. This is an enormous legal question, and I think you're gonna have to have very competent advice before you go to the next step. You're gonna have to have somebody trained in this area of the law. I think I might be able to refer you. You got some recommendations? Yeah, I think so. Yes, how they solve these problems will really matter for what they find, what happens next and how much we learn about history. This recent discovery is not just exciting, but could be a game changer in how we explore and understand history. This find has big implications for the Oak Island mystery. If there are connections between the Lake Michigan stuff and what people think might be on Oak Island, it could shake up the ideas we already have. It might give us new ways of thinking, or looking at the mystery. This discovery might lead to comparing what they found in Lake Michigan with things already found on Oak Island, looking for connections or similarities. The success in Lake Michigan shows that it's possible to find things lost for a long time with the right tools and methods. This success might push for more efforts and more advanced searches on Oak Island, maybe using similar techniques. The find could also attract new money and collaborations, bringing in experts from different areas to join in future treasure hunts. This could mean more discoveries and a better understanding of our past. This big discovery is more than just looking for treasures. It's like adding a new part to our history storybook giving fresh ideas or proving what we already thought true. These kinds of finds are super important. They make the history world more exciting, and show that working together in different areas can really work. The attention and interest from people 
because of these discoveries, show how crucial it is to take care of old things, and keep our underwater history safe. These finds tell us that history is always changing, with every new thing we find, making our past richer and easier to understand. The treasure found in Lake Michigan, isn't just a bunch of old stuff that's worth money. It opens up new ideas for the mystery on Oak Island, sets the path for more explorations, and helps us learn more about history and archaeology.